very good morning students so in this particular lecture we'll be talking about the structure of pseudopodia and the movement in amoeba so first of all we'll be starting with the structure of pseudopodium so as the pseudopodia as the name suggests pseudo means false which is not a true structure so pseudopodia refers to the false feet of amoeba so these are all the pseudopodia of amoeba so this is another pseudopodium and these help in the movement of amoeba in water so pseudo means false and podium means foot so they are the irregular blunt processes of the cell body of the amoeba and they are variable in size and they are protruded or retracted also in the body of the amoeba so once a pseudopodium is formed in a particular direction so it can be retracted back into the body of amoeba <clears throat> so particular type of pseudopodia which are very large and are having round tips they are called as lobopodia so the blunt pseudopodia are also called as lobopodia so as you can see here in this diagram so this is a kind of blunt pseudopodium and that will be referred to as a lobopodium here this particular pseudopodium is not blunt it is a sharp one and this pseudopodium is also the sharp pseudopodium so these are not lobopodia but this particular uh, the pseudopodium number one is considered as lobopodium now how they move and how they are formed pseudopodia are formed by the pressure of the endoplasm so as we all know that uh, in the very center you have endoplasm and this endoplasm is flowing just into the pseudopodium just like this so this flow will make a pseudopodium so it can be formed in any direction particularly it will be formed in the direction of the movement of amoeba so if amoeba wants to move on the right side it will form a pseudopodium on the right side so this is the mechanism of the formation of pseudopodia so they are formed with the pressure flow of endoplasm so in this diagram this is the previous diagram that we have seen in the lesson one so in this diagram you are seeing a uh, lobopodium and this is the direction of the flow of the endoplasm so as amoeba has got endoplasm in the center and you have ectoplasm in the outer side here it is worth mentioning that uh, the ectoplasm which is present outside the pseudopodium it is quite rigid and contractile and it is always under tension so this ectoplasmic layer it protects the pseudopodium from bursting out so this is a protective layer and this layer is called as the halene cap so this layer of ectoplasm is called as the halene cap the second part of this video is about the locomotion or the movement in amoebae so amoeba shows a characteristic amoeboid movement by the formation of finger like projections which are called as pseudopodia so these are formed by the flow of the cytoplasm or particularly the endoplasm which is a liquid kind of fluid uh, as per the uh, ectoplasm is concerned it is 
uh, much more concentrated it is much more contractile as compared to the endoplasm so ectoplasm it forms the haline cap over the pseudopodium which is a protective layer so amoeba it moves with the help of pseudopodium in a particular direction uh, the average speed of amoeba is just one micron per second so it is uh, moving at a very very slow speed if you see it in a microscope it will be moving at a very very slow speed now we are discussing the theories of amoeboid movement so various scientists they have given their own theories for the movement of amoeba so the very first theory is the contraction hydraulic theory so that was given in 18 and 75 which states that the amoeba undergoes contraction at the posterior end and it causes the protoplasmic currents to flow forward pushing it on the forward side so that causes the movement so that was the contraction hydraulic theory now the second theory of amoeboid movement is the surface tension theory so that theory was given by Berthold in 1886 so this theory explains the amoeboid movement as the movement is due to a difference in the surface tension in between the plasma membrane of the amoeba and the substratum on which is which it is moving so due to this surface tension difference the amoeba is moving in water so that was the theory third theory is the rolling movement theory it was given by Jennings in 1904 and this theory states that the amoeba is rolling just like a ball and if we put a drop of some stain on amoeba it can be seen rolling just like a football in water so that was a rolling movement theory so next theory is the walking movement theory so that was given by Dellinger in 1906 so this theory mm, explains the amoeboid movement as the amoeba it is walking on its pseudopodia so amoeba makes two or three pseudopodia and the amoeba is walking on the pseudopodia and it is uh, using the pseudopodia as its legs next we have the folding and unfolding theory so folding and unfolding theory gives uh, explanation to the amoeboid movement that whole of the amoeba first of all it folds on itself and when it unfolds it is stretched to some extent and that unfolding state it helps the amoeba to move to certain distance but that distance is very very small next theory is the fountain zone theory or fountain theory so this theory explains uh, the movement of amoeba is due to the <clears throat> movement of the endoplasm into the pseudopodium into a particular direction so just like a fountain so as in a fountain the water moves up and it comes back down so this is a kind of the movement of endoplasm in the amoeba next is the very very important theory and which is permissible nowadays is called as the soul gel transformation theory so this theory is most accepted theory this theory was advocated by Jaggi in 1961 and marshland in 1964 so this theory explains the amoeboid movement as a reversible transformation of soul and gel in the body of the amoeba so this theory is important to know 
because this is the main accepted explanation to the amoeboid movement. This diagram explains the soul gel theory in some basic form. So this theory is based upon the formation of soul and gel. As we have already discussed that cytoplasm can be divided into two parts which is endoplasm and ectoplasm. So here endoplasm that is considered to be as the soul and ectoplasm is considered to be as the gel. So here in this diagram if you see it has been written as gel and this has been written as plasma soul. So plasma soul is the endoplasm and that is exerting the pressure. Now endoplasm from the posterior end which is also called as the uroid. So uroid is the posterior end. So from uroid the endoplasm it starts to move forward. So the endoplasm moves forward or the soul is moving forward and after going some distance at the tip this soul is converted into gel. So this is the location where it is converted into gel. So this is called as the zone of gelation. So soul is coming from the center and it is coming to the tip of the amoeba and here it is converted into the gel. Now this gel is taken back from the periphery towards the posterior end. Now this gel here it is mentioned the plasma gel so it is going back again and at the posterior end this is the zone of solation as you can read up here this is a zone of solation so <clears throat> here the gel is converted into soul so when it is converted into soul here this soul again travels forwards and here it is converted into gel again so gel comes back and then again it is converted into soul. So this is soul gel transformation of the cytoplasm. So this theory is based upon the reversible transformation of soul into gel in the anterior part and gel into soul in the posterior part.